Welcome to this week's episode of Automation World's Technology Matters. Now, in last week's episode, I highlighted a survey from the Eclipse Foundation about the adoption rate of IoT technologies in industry. Now, the Eclipse Foundation is well known for its role as an independent, not-for-profit corporation that manages the Eclipse open source software development community, an organization that's supported now by more than 275 members. Now, for many people in industry, open source software remains a bit of an enigma when it comes to its use in production operations. Now, as sketchy as open source software may sound to an uninitiated user, the reality is that open source software is not only being applied by larger numbers of manufacturers, it's also being integrated into the technologies created by automation suppliers. To learn more about this, we connected with Benson Hoagland and Terry Orchard of Opto22 for an episode of Automation World Get Your Questions Answered podcast series. Now, according to Benson, Opto's position on open source software for industrial use is that they're huge proponents. We embrace it, he said. Open source software gives us lots of flexibility in the types of solutions we can provide, whether it's SCADA, process control, or discrete applications. He added that Opto22 makes extensive use of open source technology in its products. For example, in Groove Epic, Opto22's new edge programmable industrial controller. Now, Benson also explained that the industrial market isn't so much demanding that companies like Opto22 offer open source software, but that they're demanding new and exciting technologies to address a number of problems in automation, particularly in SCADA communications, he said. Now, the bottom line with open source software for industrial use is that Assessing it properly comes down to research, just like with commercial applications. Benson said that with open source technologies, the difference is where the information comes from. It won't come from the vendor embedding the technology. It'll come from the open source community, such as Tango, Sardina Systems, OpenSCADA, and RapidSCADA. Benson advises visiting their websites to figure out which open source kits are the most successful and are being continually supported. He said to look for the last activity on their forum or when the last build was made so that you can get a feel for the longevity of the organization behind the software and their support for the package. To learn more, check out the podcast via the URL shown below. And next, we'll look at the HMI upgrade recently done at Bardstown Bourbon Company, a producer of whiskeys and bourbons in Bardstown, Kentucky. Now, industrial companies of all sizes are realizing the need to upgrade automation technologies to take advantage of greater system connectivity possibilities and to position their businesses for the digital future of industry. And while such upgrades may seem daunting, it's important to realize that a digital transformation doesn't have to be tackled all at once. Artstown Bourbon's example is a good one to follow as they first focused on upgrading their HMIs as a key starting point for their digital transformation. And Bardstown Bourbon's production equipment includes two mash cookers, 32 fermenters, two distillation stills, and nine cistern holding tanks. The company's previous HMI system had limited flexibility in terms of data collection, process history, and licensing. So the company began looking for a replacement system that would address those issues, but also allow for the creation of a system architecture that could adapt to the company's changing needs. Now, after reviewing several options, Bardstown Bourbon chose Inductive Automation's Ignition platform because it provides a way to communicate with the company's ERP system. Now, this connection enables Bardstown Bourbon to present operators with a work order request web page driven by the ERP system without requiring them to load a separate application. Ignition also enabled Bardstown Bourbon to implement a custom batch tracking system and deliver HMI data to mobile devices using Ignition's perspective module. Now, Roger Henley, Bardstown Bourbon's plant engineer, said the new HMI system leverages a much greater amount of historical data on all control points in the system, which allows plant leadership to make more informed decisions. The project also benefits from being centralized, as project modifications are published immediately to all client stations and data are easily accessible by plant personnel based on user permissions. Now, this centralized approach has allowed Bardstown Bourbon to collect, 
store, and review their batch data and recipe data consistently. Henley said, the ability to historize an unlimited number of data points has changed the way we do business and make decisions. You can learn more about what Bardstown Bourbon gained from its new HMI system and how they use the new software to extend visibility of HMI data on mobile devices via the URL shown. Finally, let's take a look at how the application of connected sensors to gather equipment data as part of Industry 4.0 and Industrial Internet of Things initiatives is now being applied to industrial workers to improve their safety. An example of this is Strongarm Technologies' Fuse Sensor and Platform which is an industrial-grade, lightweight IoT device designed to capture a worker's movement data. Worn by the worker, the sensor takes readings 12 and a half times per second, which translates to around 300,000 times during an eight-hour shift. Data collected by each Fuse device uploads to the cloud, where the Fuse platform's proprietary machine learning algorithm analyzes the wearer's risk of musculoskeletal injuries. Now, in terms of how data captured by the FUSE sensor translates into corrective measures for workers, Michael Kim of Strongarm Technologies said the data allows us to really take an in-depth look at various trends and anomalies in the data. Using the core features of our platform's dashboard, we're able to understand where behavioral improvements like training and real-time feedback are applicable. We're also able to identify areas that require improvement and show where engineering controls or physical constraints may need to be implemented. Now, since its initial release in 2017, Strongarm Technology says the Fuse sensor has been installed more than 100 times and received the Best Invention Award from Time Magazine in 2018. To learn more about this sensor, visit the URL shown. So, I hope you enjoyed this Technology Matters episode and that you'll check out these and other posts at automationworld.com. And if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, Please do so by clicking on the AWTV logo on the bottom right hand side of your screen and tell your coworkers to please do the same. That way we'll be able to more, add more interactive features to our content here on the Automation World TV channel. And keep checking back in with us here as we'll be posting new videos regularly. So we'll see you soon with the next installment of Automation World's Technology Matters. Mm -hmm.